Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. Advances in distillation column design. In the part 2 of the series, you will understand the advances in packing design. The learning outcome of this course is to understand 1. Limitations in conventional, random packing and structured packing as well as distributors. 2. Advanced technologies for enhanced and breakthrough performance. Advances in packing design. Pack column internals have seen several transformational changes in the past three decades. Innovative design packing technologies have emerged in random packing, structured packing, and distributors. You will learn during this part of the course the advances that have emerged in these column internals. A packed column has two functional elements. A beta packing to provide surface area for vapor liquid contact by generating a thin film of liquid instead of droplets. Distributors and redistributors to maintain the localized vapor liquid ratio uniformly through the height of the bed. This sketch illustrates a typical packed distillation column consisting of two beds, bed 1 of height Z1 for the rectification section and bed 2 of height Z2 for the stripping section. On top of bed 1 is placed a distributor to receive and distribute the reflex over the surface of bed 1. A redistributor collects and redistributes the liquid from the bottom of the bed 1 as well as the feed to the column. Both the beds are supported on packing support which is fixed to the column. This figure illustrates a packing layer of structured packing and how it provides the contacting surface for the liquid and vapor. Liquid stream is shown in green color and the vapor stream is shown in black color. The liquid is distributed as a thin film spreading over the surface of the packing where it comes in contact with the vapor flowing up as a continuous phase. Packed column performance is influenced by the two important elements of packed column. They are one packing and two distributors. The design variables for the packing are specific surface area, height equivalent of theoretical plates, capacity and pressure drop. The design variables for the distributors are turn down, wetting flow, drip point density and defaulting design. The three most important characteristics of packing are packing area, wide fraction and packing factor. Driven by the need for improved performance in terms of capacity and efficiency, advances in packing designs have been realized in one types of packing to design of distributors. We will discuss them one by one now. High capacity structured packing. It is an advanced packing technology. It is widely used in the existing distillation columns in refineries and petrochemical plants as a solution to enhance the column capacity during the capacity expansion of the plants. It is used for new plant designs where the column size and investment can be reduced. This figure illustrates the conventional structured packing. On the left is one single layer of structured packing. The packing is manufactured as a single layer or element. Depending on the packing height required as per design, 
Several such layers are assembled and placed in the column bed. On the right you can see an assembled bed of packing consisting of five layers. When we discuss structured packing, it is important to learn what characteristics of the packing influences separation performance. Characteristics of structured packing are mainly a function of 1. Packing geometry, 2. Distribution quality, 3. Process system properties. Packing geometry is determined by two factors that are properties of packing. They are a crimp angle, b surface area of packing. How does surface area and crimp angle impact packing performance? As regards surface area, efficiency increases with surface area. As regards crimp angle, efficiency increases with decreasing crimp angle. The impact of crimp angle on the flooding capacity is significant. As the inclination angle increases, the efficiency decreases but the capacity increases. There are two styles of structured packing. One X style which has an inclination angle of 60 degrees. Two Y style which has an inclination angle of 45 degrees. The X style has higher capacity and a little less efficiency than the Y style. This table shows packing parameters of some of the conventional structured packing used in the industry. Details provided are for white type of packing with the crimp angle 45 degrees. The important packing parameters are packing factor, surface area of the packing, porosity and HETP. Packing factor FP is related to the pressure drop. As the number increases, the surface of the packing and the pressure drop increases and HETP decreases. Lower HETP means higher efficiency. So where is the improvement is happening in the structured packing advancement? Large improvement over the past decades has been in the texture of the packing surface to improve the liquid spread which is wettability and as a result in the packing efficiency. At this point, I want you to understand how the HETP and pressure drop vary with capacity. Usually HETP and pressure drop of the packing are represented in a performance plot as a function of superficial vapor load which is either the capacity factor or C factor CS or F factor Fs. This figure illustrates the HETP as a function of vapor loading represented by C factor Cs. You can observe there are three regions in the graph, region 1, 2 and 3. Let me explain them in little more detail. At low loads, the distribution of liquid on the packing is poor, which results in poor wetting of the surfaces. The interaction between the vapor and the liquid is ineffective, hence the HETP will be high. This is illustrated in the figure on the left. As the loads are increased, the wetting of the packing surfaces improves, resulting in more intimate contact between the faces and HETP steadily decreases because of this. This is illustrated in the figure on the left. At a point corresponding to the loading point of the packing, the HETP becomes constant over a range of loads. This is illustrated in the figure on the left.
As the loads are further increased, the HETP shows a decline owing to the high interaction between the fluids followed by a rapid increase in the HETP caused by recirculation of liquid within the bed. This corresponds to the initial flooding of the bed. This is illustrated in the figure on the left. This figure illustrates pressure drop as a function of vapor loading. As the vapor loading increases, pressure drop increases gradually up to a certain point. As the capacity is increased progressively beyond this point, pressure drop start decreasing sharply. The point where the sharp increase in PD is observed indicates the onset of flooding. So how do we retain packing efficiency and keeping the pressure drop within the design limit while increasing the capacity? That is the focus of advances in packing design. There has been constant research and development effort to meet the industry needs of capacity enhancement. All advanced packing design invariably looks to enhancing the packing void or the open flow area without compromising on efficiency. Breakthrough innovation has led to the development of high capacity structured packing. High capacity packings are characterized by high surface area to the extent of 700 square meter per meter cube of packing and C factor of 2.15 meter per second. An increase in surface area up to 40% has been realized in high capacity packing. This slide illustrates how structured packing has evolved over the past three decades. In 1950, the structured packing use was in the waveform. 1975 saw the emergence of structured packing in corrugated form. Early 2000 saw the emergence of high capacity packing. Conventional structured packing capacity is limited by flow interaction of the layer interface. At the layer interface, there is an abrupt directional change. This abrupt directional change limits the amount of counterflowing liquid and vapor as shown in the figure in the next slide. This picture illustrates the corrugation configuration at the layer interface of conventional structured packing. As we discussed before, in a distillation column, the desired packing height is obtained by assembling several layers of structured packing element one above the other. To avoid flow channeling, the second layer is placed above the first layer at 90 degree angle. In the figure shown here, you can see layer 1 and layer 2 are stacked one above the other at 90 degrees angle. At the interface, the liquid take a sharp directional change. The red dots show the liquid hold up at the interface. The hold up is uniform from top to bottom of the packing layer below the loading point. Beyond the loading point, hold up increases at the interface. This sketch shows how the holdup profile in a conventional packing. From uniform holdup below the loading point, holdup increases at the interface due to abrupt change in direction as vapor flow is increased beyond the loading point. If the restriction is removed by a subtle modification, of the transition of the interface, the premature buildup of liquid can be eliminated. The enlarged turning point radius increases the area for vapor and reduces the pressure drop and increases the capacity. And 
This case shows how the conventional structure packing is modified at the transition. From abrupt direction change, the liquid from one layer to the other flows through a larger turning point radius of the interface. The larger training radius at the transition is demonstrated in this sketch by the circle in yellow color. High capacity packing is similar in construction to standard FlexiPack or Melapack 250Y except for subtle modification in the geometry of the corrugation at the top and bottom of each packing layer. High capacity structured packing HC type enhances liquid drainage from one element to the next resulting in reduction of liquid holdup at the interface. This figure, a plot of HETP versus a factor, illustrates the performance of high capacity packing as compared to standard structured packing. As the F factor increases above 3.5, the HETP in the case of standard structured packing increases sharply due to liquid accumulation at the interface. With high capacity packing, HETP remains steady at 0.4 meter until the F factor reaches 4.8, thus leading to an increase in capacity of the column. Now let us see an example of a distillation column fitted with conventional jump back to your structured packing which has a capacity constraint. This column is used in the manufacture of a petrochemical product. Observe and see what performance improvement will be realized if you replace the packing with the high capacity packing. The performance improvement upon replacing the gem pack 2 year structured packing in the distillation column with the high capacity packing is illustrated in this slide. Note the differences in packing characteristic between the two types of packing. Notably, the surface area of high capacity packing is larger and HETP is smaller when compared to the standard structured packing. This side illustrates what modifications were done in the distribution column during the replacement of standard packing with high capacity packing. Note, packing replacement needs changes in other column internals also such as distributors, redistributors, vapor distributor and packing support etc. In any process modification, the design objective is not to exceed the process constraints. These constraints are percentage of flood, pressure drop across rectification and stripping sections, and finished product purity. When you attempt to change the existing packing to achieve your capacity enhancement objective, these design limits cannot be compromised. In this example, the maximum percentage of flood limit was 70%, the achieved flooding level was 70%. Pressure drop limit was 12 inches of water column per feet of packing and the achieved result was within that. Hence, the design objective has been met with this column modification. Packing elements are sensitive to solid particles entering the column along with the process streams. Hence, packing selected should be in line with the process requirement. Recent advances in structured packing design include packing for following services. Fouling is an important issue in distillation process in several refining and petrochemical industries. It can lead to reduced capacity and loss of efficiency. Fouling phenomenon in packed columns can originate either from vapor or liquid phase.
What are the ways by which falling can occur in packed columns? Broadly, if I form means it can occur. Polymerization, sedimentation, chemical reaction and corrosion. The important factors that can influence packing fouling are residence time, stagnation zones, emulsion issues, shop transitions. Sedimentation is an accumulation of solids in low velocity areas in the towers. Many processes contain suspended solids which can settle out on moist transfer surfaces like packing. Coke formed in high temperature reaction is an example. Polymerization is the linking of double bonds to form long chain molecules. Examples include polypropylene and polyethylene in monomer distillation column. These products can lead to reduced capacity and in worst case can lead to column shutdown. In distillation, desired or undesirable chemical reactions can occur. For example, in ethylene propylene caustic wash towers, there are competing chemical reactions. The caustic absorbs CO2 and forms bicarbonate salts. For packed towers, liquid distributors and packing residence time are the key consideration while dealing with folding. Longer the residence time, the less suitable it is. Hence, the low pressure drop and low residence time and smooth surfaces perform best in folding services. For heavy folding services, packing called grid packing has been developed for use in refining operations, particularly in the wash sections of FCC, vacuum towers, etc. Grids can be an improved packing choice, overstructured packing, even at reduced efficiency in wash bed towers. Some high performance severe service grid packing combines efficiency of structured packing with robustness and fouling resistance of grid packing. Grid packing is an assembly of sturdy corrugated sheets welded to heavy gauge rods. The figure shown in this slide is an example of typical grid packing. The combination of welded rod assembly and corrugated sheets of ringies material thickness provide robust design that resists damage from tower upset in the erosion. The gap between the sheets provide improved fouling resistance. Now let us move on to advancement in another important element impact column, advanced and distributor design. Have we ever paid attention to distributors in packed column and their influence in packing performance? If not, it is time to learn and look into their design aspects. Distributors affect to a great extent the performance of the packing for a specific separation. Depth of packing is determined from number of theoretical stages and mechanical design of distributor. Poor liquid distributor design causes a localized deviation in liquid vapor ratio and thus loss in separation efficiency and hence rise in HETP operation. HETP design may vary from HETP operation. Liquid mode distribution is an important factor in determining HETP operation and responsible for poor packing performance. With the help of the figures that follow, I will make you understand how a poor distributor affects the packing performance and separation efficiency. Your distributor distributes liquid through holes drilled in several arms of the distributor. As you for instance 
that one of the hole is blocked as shown in this figure by a solid particle. How does it impact separation? Now we look closely at this figure. In the packing surface just below the distributor arm which has its holes blocked, there is no liquid wetting or film formation over the packing surface. The packing is not irrigated in this zone. The distributor distributes the liquid over the rest of the packing surface. The mass transfer capability of the given packing does not change with the depth of the bed, but the lack of proper distribution caused either by design fault or the clogged distributor holes will result in deviation from the desired value bay ratio across the cross section of the bed, which will lead to loss of separation efficiency. Moreover, efficiency of one bed may differ from the efficiency of the other bed when the type and size of packing in each bed is the same. This again is a result of localized deviation in LVAB ratio caused by poor distribution of liquid by the distributor of that bed. Thus it is clear to you now that for fouling services, we cannot use the standard distributors meant for clean liquid. Fouling resistant distributor design is needed to obtain design performance on a sustainable basis. One such distributor's design is illustrated in this figure. Note that in the figure shown, in the new design, the distributor holes are made on the wall at a height from the bottom, allowing space for settling of the solid. Shown in this figure is another distributor design for fouling services. The base of the distributor arm in this design is at a raised level from the bottom where solids can settle down, allowing clear liquid to flow from the holes. High Capacity Random Packing High Capacity Random Packing is an advanced packing technology. It is widely used in the existing distribution columns in refineries and petrochemical plants to enhance the calling capacity during the capacity expansion of the plants. It is used for new plant design where the column size and hence investment can be reduced. Random packing has evolved over the years. Random packing in general is available in two shapes namely rings and saddles. The advantage of ring type packing is that it can handle large reflux, but its disadvantage is bad distribution of liquid. The advantage of saddle type packing is good liquid distribution, but its disadvantage is that it can handle only small flux. Here you can see how random packing has evolved over the past 5 decades. In 1950, rustic rings and bell saddles were used. In 1960, pod rings came into the market. The period between 1970 to 1980 saw the emergence of high performance packings such as CMR, IMTP, Nutter rings and Flexi Max. 2000 to 2010 saw the emergence of high capacity random packing in the LOX Ultra. Ring type of packings include pall rings, cascader mini ring that is CMR and nutter rings. Saddle types of packing include bad saddles, IMTP and Fleximax. This table shows the packing parameters of some of the random packing used in the industry. We have compared here three types of packing, CMR, IMTP and Nutter rings with their packing parameters.
CMR, IMTP, Nutter Rings and FlexiMac have large surface area and improved distribution of liquid compared to pole rings. They are very widely used random packing today in petroleum refining and petrochemical industries with IMTP as the most preferred choice. Although structured packing have distinct advantages such as high surface area per unit volume and low pressure drop compared to random packing, they do not perform satisfactorily at high operating pressures and high liquid rates. In distillation applications at elevated pressures, the vapor to liquid density ratio is very high requiring high liquid rates. Hence, for tower applications at high operating pressures and high liquid rates, random packing is still the preferred choice. As discussed earlier during our deliberation on structured packing, plants always look for opportunities for capacity expansion. The distillation towers needs to be debottlenecked or revamped to handle the proposed capacity enhancement. The plants evaluate different packing choices for the tower revamp. On many occasions, higher capacity is achieved with slightly lower efficiency. In the final selection, a compromise is made between capacity and efficiency. Thus, there was a constant drive to design random packing which will deliver performance of high capacity with better or same efficiency. Sometime around 2005, a new generation of packing element emerged in the random packing category, Interlox Ultra. This random packing has open and easily accessible flow paths that facilitate good vapor liquid contact and lower pressure drop and presents a uniform surface area of distribution. In this figure is shown the fourth generation interlock ultra random packing element. How does it perform in towers with the other high performance packing elements? HETP and pressure drop are the two performance parameters that needs to be compared in the evaluation process. Since IMTP has a large share of application among the random backing in the industrial installations in the world, it is appropriate to compare the performance of Interlux Ultra with IMTP. The HTTP pressure drop plots as a function of capacity represented by C factor CS are studied. This table compares the relative performance of Interlux Ultra and IMTP random packing. The table lists the size of the packing element and their respective HTTP values. INP40 and Interlox Ultra 1.5 inches have the same HTTP. Likewise, INP50 and Interlox 2 inches have the same HTTP. If you replace INP40 with Interlox Ultra 1.5 inches, same HTTP as IMTP40 will be obtained, but capacity will be greater than IMTP40 and pressure drop will be less than IMTP40. If you replace INP50 with an interlock ultra or 2 inches, you will get same HTTP as IMTP50, but capacity will be greater than INTP50 and pressure drop will be less than INTP50. With interlock ultra high performance packing, you can increase the capacity of any random packing tower by up to 10% while maintaining the same efficiency compared to the previous packing such as IMTP. For new installations, use of interlock ultra results in reduction of tower diameter and thickness in high pressure applications 
high mechanical strength of the packing element and lower bed weight and lower investment. With this, we have come to the end of the presentation of part 2 of the two part series on advanced distillation column design. Also come to the end is a course on advanced distillation column design. Hope this presentation with the narration and animation was useful. Share with friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of career oriented professionals and students who are desirous of developing job oriented skills and enhancing their knowledge base. Subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. Thank you for watching.